What is going on, guys? Welcome to week number 10, year number four of the Big 12 Team Builder Dynasty. We are kicking this one off with perhaps the biggest game of this week. ACU against Ardmore, number one against number four. ACU is still well alive in the national championship race, but if Ardmore can get through this game after beating Denver Tech, the lone biggest obstacle left in their path will be the championship game. So Ardmore needs this W. Yes, nothing comes easy in this Big 12 of you guys have already come to note throughout the course of this dynasty. Shane Price with the deflection here. Ardmore has to go give them the football back. Three and out is Ardmore. Here's Alex Jefferson with the catch. You got second and seven here. Russell going to the sidelines for Kirk. And he gets pushed out by Boy. This matchup should play in ACU's favor against this young secondary for the Thunderwolves. Yes, it's going to be extremely tough. They have guys like Orquan Ostrander, Alex Jefferson, Aaron Penner is going to be a, a key factor for ACU when they do decide to run the football. Keeping us off balance is the biggest thing for them. But on third and goal, Leonard David cannot pick up the touchdown there as a nice tackle to keep him out of the end zone. They're going to have to settle for a field goal here. So Ardmore back with football, second and 10, and Jake Woods getting the call. He's going to get eight. He's going to set us up for a nice third and two. Jake Woods still out there. He's been a very effective runner for us so far this season, so we're going to keep going back to him. And then John Hicks able to read that correctly. ACU actually did a good job covering that, but Hicks with his athleticism able to get that first down and look at that throw right there Zach Flores picking up the big time first down got 30 yards on that reception and the pocket was kind of breaking down a little bit but Hicks able to improvise and right here he is not able to improvise there for a 10 yard loss Boris Beef custom recruit for where's the, the beef yeah where is the beef Xavier Wiggins gonna get pushed into the end zone so he keeps those legs churning Hicks now 7 of 9 for 75 yards and a score. And that is his first score on the game. Ardmore, 7 to 3. Xavier Wiggins, nice efforts right there. Yes, he did not get stopped by the one yard line monster. Here's Russell on third and 10. Looking, oh, oh, it's picked off by Carl Boyd. Yeah, this guy comes up with an interception like every week, it seems like. And that one was really big for us. Right up the middle, had him covered perfectly. Ardmore with the football here now. Zach Flores with a little juke move there, able to stay above that first down marker. Going to get 11 there. Second and one. Hicks, ooh, a little dangerous pass right there. Kind of taking a little few little risks here. I don't really like this here. I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing. Xavier Wiggins, uh-oh. Xavier Wiggins wow. with the cut on the screen. 26 yards score. And Hicks, 11 of 13 for two of them. And Wiggins with two. Go team. Yay, team. Yeah, go team. Jackson Lunall with an eight yard reception there. And ACU now down 14 to three. Can we go back and talk about that? That move that Xavier Wiggins made just there? That was unreal. The guy seems to make plays all the time. Second and one, Joe Russell gonna pick up the first. First and 10, Russell, pocket oh, breaking down that's... just a little bit, and he's gonna get dropped there by James Holmes. He's got two sacks on the game right now. Second and 18, pass complete to Kirk. Now Ardmore's defense is a little bit shaky right now. 15 yards, third and three, gotta get a stop. We don't oh, get wow. the stop. Penner gets it by about a foot. Second and 11 here, Russell. Going to Jefferson, Aww. and we got a missed tackle right there. Scales can't take him. Down, Boyd barely gets him. 32 yards up the gut for Alex Jefferson, custom recruit. Russell flips to Jimmy Ireland, who's going down. Third and goal, though, from this spot. Gets Kirk. Oh, okay. And he cannot score. They, so. went, they went short versus going straight into the end zone. It's 14 to 6. Right now, Zach Flores on a third and five. He's been a big factor in the receiving game so far in today's game. First and 10, Wiggins again going up the middle, and he's going to get 11 right there. So it's going to set us up first and goal. And Hicks going to find Jake Wood. He was lined up as a wide receiver. He's a do-it-all back for us right now, man. Touchdown Ardmore, 14 of 16 is John Hicks for three scores 
He's accounting for all scores for Ardmore. Look at Aaron Penner go. He just he doesn't go down very easily. He's a little tired right now, but Russell is not looking his way. He's going to Jackson Lunoff. Oof. Huge tackle made there. Russell now though will give to Penner. Gets inside the three. He takes a you know. Takes big a big hit. hit. Russell though down at the Wow. Wow. So he got tackled down at the one yard line. And they and kicked the field goal. They're going to have to go to the field goal again. So here's a pass complete to A.O. Chiquendu on third and 11. Four seconds to go. And Ardmore's got one more play. One more play. Let's get this score, baby. Let's get this touchdown. Ah, just a little bit short. A little bit short. I wanted that so bad because no lead is safe against ACU. Well, so far, it's the classic Ohio State-Michigan situation. Three field goals versus three touchdowns. Yep. You lose That's that what it feels time. like. And but Hunter will take this one to the house. Yeah, no one's catching him. No one's catching him. Did not even take AC 30 seconds to get on the board for the first time in the game. That's what I'm saying, man. No lead is safe in this football game against ACU. Anytime you're playing ACU, no lead is safe. Wiggins with blocking out front. He's going to pick up the first what? down, but Price. Come on. That's insane. That's insane. But look at Freeman Churchwell with the tackle, with the Honey big hit. Prey. And Price with the fumble recovery. And we've got, oh, Andrews. Andrews with the interception. Go, baby, go. So we get the turnover back. Oh, man, Ardmore is coming up clutch right here. No! But John Hicks throws it back away <laughs> to Armand Hammer. That's, you were getting too cute, man. I got too cute. There's no reason you should have ran that play. Oh, my God. But I didn't even see Hammer right there. I, I honestly didn't see him. Yeah, he was just sort of like, oh, thank you. He looked like he was taken away on that read option type of animation. Yeah. But then, like, I'm like, oh, I got to throw here. I got a lane. How about no Kirk lane. Uh, getting flipped up here? He got a third and one. And now going underneath to Ireland. Jimmy Ireland. It's kind of an interesting turn of events there. ACU gets the turnover, we get a turnover, then ACU gets it back, right? It's crazy. Penner, oh God. Oh God. Boyd, <laughs> Boyd, what are you doing? Can't make the tackle, oh, man. it was goofy. Jacobs makes the tackle on Jimmy Ireland. Second and one after a nine yard pickup. Russell's got good protection right here. Going to go to the left and Penner. Gonna get the first down, but not after taking a huge hit by Anthony Jacobs. He's laying the lumber. Between him and Diggs, we got some pretty heavy hitters here for Armour's defense. Alex Jefferson, though, is gonna get an eight yard score, and now ACU is on top with that six pointer. And they're gonna go for two to make it a three point game, and wide open is Alex Jefferson again for the two point conversion. Jefferson's looking good in that dark gray and day old mac and cheese in your sink yellow. <laughs> that ACU is known for. You're talking about the Kraft macaroni. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, you guys know what we're talking about. Yep. Second and when inches. Look, it's day old mac and cheese in your sink. When you're too lazy to put the bowl away, that's the color. Are that you revealing with. some things about your uh, your habits? I don't eat mac and cheese like uh, you do. Uh, uh, yeah, it's true. Ayo hey, Chiquendu, wow, look at this. Third and nine, we pick up the first down after utilizing our blockers perfectly. A.O. Chiquendu having a pretty decent game so far. And Jake Wood going to get the call here on third and inches. Eight seconds to go in the third. We're going to move on to the fourth. Oh, God. And wow, Peck with a 20-yard catch right there. That's a pretty gutsy throw by Hicks. You had to get a lot of velocity on that to even get it in there. And he did. First down. And Xavier Wiggins, nothing was open downfield. We're going to dump it off, and he's going to do the rest of the work. Three touchdowns now for Xavier Wiggins. Four for John Hicks through the air. Ardmore's up 28 to 24. Yeah, this is crunch time here. Long highlight reel, but I mean, this is a huge matchup, huge game. The balance of the Big 12 East is hanging in, shall we say, the balance right now. ACU gets 16 yards from Joe Russell, and they are on the march. Hunter not going down, and then he gets tackled. Three-yard loss. He tried fighting through that. He's got six for 94. Oh, Williams make the tackle. He's, oh. Oh, he got the hand to the face by Russell, but it's going to be fourth and inches. What's the call here? They got to go, go for, for it. it. And we're trying to cover that outside, but it's not going to work. Jimmy Ireland. We were bringing the blitz, thinking they're going to run that read option again, and Ireland picks up 14. Second and six. Ireland going to yeah. go to the end zone. He's going to push himself in. 
Oh no! Oh no! Three minutes and 25 seconds to go, and ACU takes the lead again. Yeah. They're gonna go back up three points. One yard line monster having a tough day today. Got a couple, couple players getting over the one yard line monster. Yes, Xavier Wiggins gonna bust off a f one tackle, gonna pick up the first down, keep those legs churning, man. He is doing a great job of that so far in this game. Hicks looking for Jake Wood on that, on that corner route, that triangle route not open he's gonna take off and run with it for a first down 225 left and a bomb deep to chiquendu almost picked off shane price oh don't make that mistake man that was the game for acu had they made that pick and a gutsy throw up the middle to ryan markham the tight end second and three guerrero gonna pick up the first he's gonna bust off some tackles Ooh, we're in field goal range now, but we're shooting for the touchdown, guys. We're killing some clock, and Hicks with a little stutter step. Down at the... Oh, down at the one, but he's going to get the face mask call. Didn't matter, though, anyway. Half it's a first down. the goal for about uh, a couple inches. And Jake, Jake Wood going to get stopped down at the one. 11, 11 seconds to go here. Guys, this is the... It, this might be Hicks's Heisman moment. He gets in. Touchdown, Ardmore. 35 to 31 with 10 seconds left to go. Wow, what a turn of events. AC's got one last chance to salvage their season right now. Joe Russell is oh, going, going short. Pitch it. No. Wow. His brain just got pitched on that hit right there. Wow. But they went short. Ardmore will win the game and ACU not the smartest game I've ever seen no settle for field goals early cost them dearly later in the game so ACU does go down for the second time this year and pretty surprising result there but Ardmore still alive in the title race and they have a pretty clean path to get there they have the lowest ranked teams in the Big 12 East coming up left on their slate but let's go to Odessa Tejas as Odessa is going to take on Nebraska State. We have Gusu versus Gonsu in this game. Cameron Willis versus Ben Shanoski. Revenge City right now. No running expected to be featured in this game outside of the very first play of the game from scrimmage. Demarcus Gibson goes for 41 yards. They got you off balance. They totally fooled they us. They did not run the football all year long because they wanted to run their they wanted to run that play against you. It worked. It worked. Here's Cameron Willis throwing to Doug Williams out of Wyoming. Now we have Willis. Oh, Shanka just misses him, the former his former teammate. Wow. And he hooks up with Williams again for the touchdown. Shanka wanted that one. But you know the, the interesting thing about this is like, is there bad blood? It's there is really no bad blood between Willis and his old team. No. You know, he was seen talking on the sidelines to his old teammates and they all respect this decision, and they realize why he did what he did. No bad blood whatsoever. No, I mean, if you think you're good enough to start, I mean, you can't fault your, your ex-teammate for that. Right. And, you know, everybody's just going to move on, and this is the new, the new reality here. So Odessa, though, marching down the field after the unsuccessful first drive for Nebraska State. Williams again. We got to do something to stop. Doug Williams again. We almost get Willis. And he delivers that ball after taking a shot below the belt there. Second and 10, Willis got all day in the pocket. Sullivan oh, had a play oh, on it. He did. He really did. A stutter step there. First and goal, Willis going to Gibson. Easy touchdown. And Odessa in control of this game early. It's amazing how much Cameron Willis, in the probably the limited amount of time that he had to pick up this playbook, is totally mastered it. I mean, he knew, based on that defensive setup, who was going to be open in the back yeah. of the end zone like that in traffic. Here we have another stop by Odessa State, and we're starting to feel the game slip away. Is this a rash decision? Possibly. But we do get it. Derek Smith with a 13-yard grab. So if he drops that, yikes. That could be game over. Shinovsky rolling out to his right. Anderson's going to die. Oh, oh, wow. Dude, you're going to get people killed, Shinovsky. <laughs> At least Cameron Willis throws people open. Good thing this is virtual reality. Pryor down at the one. One yard line. And Dante LaBelle, we see, has a strained back. He's out for seven weeks. 
which will sideline him for the regular season. That's tough. Hargrove stuffed. Again, there's Eric Robbins. We got a fourth and two, and we are just going to go for this. Almost got him off sides. Shinovsky looking for anybody. Got Vivaldi, and that might have saved the game for us because if we don't make that, yeah. we are staring down the barrel yes. of a gun. Yes, you are, because guess what? If they can get this touchdown back, I mean, then it's starting to look pretty shaky, yeah. in my opinion, for uh, Nebraska State here. Reception up the middle to Steve Norton for 20, and now they're just Steve. marching back down the field again. Second and 10, and a Got touchdown it. again. Doug Williams with the dive, and for 16, uh, how do you stop them? They got three touchdowns. I don't know. I don't Cameron know what to do. 12 of 16, he's just eating that defense. Kusu. Kusu. <laughs> Third and inches. We should have called Odessa the Mighty Geese. Probably. Probably. For Gusu. If we had known that that was going to happen. If only we had known. Here is Ryan Watson going to get the first down and keeping balance. Shinovsky threw off balance. It's kind of a funny situation there. But Tyler Gladden going to check in, and he's going to get a two-yard touchdown score off of a read option play. It's a pretty smart call there to get your get a different quarterback, give him a different look, get that touchdown. And look at Gibson, like, ha! Ah! <laughs> that little, <laughs> little dab move right there. I like it. 17 yards right there, first and 10. Willis trying to escape the pressure. Sacked for four yards, second and 14. So finally, you guys get to Willis in the backfield, but it yeah. doesn't matter because Doug Williams is having He's himself killing us. See, we're starting game. to key in on him. We're trying that little key in thing, and it's not working because you make one cut and you're dead. Yep. So Willis will pick up the five yard. Shaka missed him again. Dude. And he goes to Parks for the score, and I don't know what to do. We're throwing everything out in our playbook, and it's not working. Oh, Shinovsky gets it to Smith, so the, the only thing we can do is just try to score and pray that it goes our way. Odessa makes a mistake or something, but third and 10, Shinovsky in, into tight coverage, and Rosario going to get the deflection. Shinovsky on for the field goal, but we feel like a field goal in this kind of game is a lost possession. I would I would agree with that for sure. You guys right are down the half and right now and oh man, seven seconds when the ball was released, Doug Williams for 29. And this field goal is up and good. Just barely good. And now you guys are down by two scores. Well they again, get, at yeah. least at least you got the field goal. But they, they got it right them. back. They got it right back. So it hurts. 31 to 17. Where's our defense in this game? <laughs> I mean, not many people can stop the number one overall offense in Odessa State. Ooh, Shinovsky got Uzuma Okafor out there wide open. See if we can get the first down on a run here to Hargrove. Makes a nice little cut down at the one yard line. Let's see if we can punch this one in. Going to Ryan Watson for a two yard touchdown. Okay, whatever. Maybe it wasn't technically down at the one. One and a half yard line. Sometimes they give you the zero yard touchdown. Yeah. Third and 10, Shonka hits Willis in his grill to force an incomplete pass. Hits some hard too. We get one of our first stops of the game. Hargrove up the middle for seven. Now let's see what Shinovsky can do as they move the ball down the field. They had a wide open X down there, but Hargrove gets the first down. Shinovsky seems more of that check down type of quarterback. He really is. Not a lot of chances. There's Cody Joseph down at the one yard line. Boom. He's not going to get in. That's brutal. You got a guy that's like, what, 6'3"? Look how big he is, and he just loses all oh, yeah. momentum. Yeah. So that will cause Hargrove to get a zero yard touchdown run as Gonsu ties it up. And hey, look at that. We get a couple stops on D. Now we are right back in this thing. But now you need a stop again. Yep. So that's like the biggest thing. You need another oh. stop. But Jabari McCollum going to get this reception right near that Dust Devil logo. 29-yard pickup there. Second and 10. Another wide-open receiver. That's Pat Dowdell, the quarterback oh, converted so wide receiver. <laughs> First and 10. Willis. Get some pressure. Scan in the field. Going to find... Gibson and he's oh. gonna run right over a Nebraska State defender second and goal and ooh, you guys read that perfectly right there third and goal now after a one yard loss Willis got a two back set they split out and Dowdell wow 
How did he even see that was gonna ha be open? How did he even see that was gonna happen? That's that's insane. Cameron Willis with the touchdown to Dowdell. 38-31, Shinoski, you need a response drive here. And oh, <laughs> Kimberling with the reception for 36. So now we're starting to get into some, some quarterback battling going on now. Absolutely. Be between Willis, Shinoski, Willis, Shinoski. There's Jontavius Nichols making an appearance. Somebody's got to fill in for LaBelle. It's going to be a three-headed monster, but Joseph is going to sneak Ooh. into the end zone as Shinoski is going to deliver for his second passing touchdown of the game. Could have had some more, if not for the one-yard line monster, but it's 38-38 to 38 and it's shootout right time now. now. Absolutely. Going back and forth, back and forth. Oh, Ward almost had a play on that one. We do bust up the screen. Why is Odessa running a screen, though, on third and ten? And their bad field goal kicker is no going to come out here. No way. And this is going to be Nichols, possibly all Big 12 returner. Let's see what he can do. We got uh -oh. a missed tackle. Uh -oh. Use the speed. Oh, and he's going to go. Use the boost to get down through. Down now. He missed the tackle. And oh, oh, wow. Oh, my God. How is that for a change Ooh. of field position right there by John Tavius Nichols? He usually breaks the first tackle. And now Shinoski is going to sling it to Joseph. Almost slipped through both of those tacklers for a touchdown. Get a little first and goal situation here. Let's see, Shinoski is going to suck him in and go to Smith. Nice, nice. And he Good hops play. over the invisible wall. That's where the improvisation skill comes handy for Ben Shinoski. Yep. Look at me, he jumped and he, were, he went backwards a little bit. Yeah. Got in, though. It's Got in. We have line. the lead. It's one-yard line monster slash magnet. We have the lead. It's 340, and look at the way they're, like, using the slants and trying to pick people, and I see what they're doing. Yeah, they're cheesing it up a little bit, just a little bit. The out routes, Dowdell for 11. Gonna Willis get out of bounds. On. Willis on first and 10 almost gets sacked, and he's going to find Parks for Out route again. Brian Parks for 19. Going to... Oh, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. Sire Sullivan should have had a pick six right there. Third and ten. Willis. Oh, they're going to screen again. It, wow. Ward almost picks that one off, but he gets the tackle in the backfield. And Odessa going to go for the field goal. They didn't run screens all game long. And then when it's coming down to the wire season. Here. Yeah. And now they're running screens. I don't get that. It doesn't make much sense. But Gansu going to get it to be second and three. Odessa used their last time out. And with 2.04 left to go, Last third and chance. five. This is, you got to pick up this first down Last here. chance. Got it. And that will do it, boys and girls. Cameron Willis falls a little bit short through no fault of his own. He was very good today, but Shinoski on the winning team gets player of the game. And like I said, both opponents respect each other. Ties run deep. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate what Cameron did here at Nebraska State. But... It is what it is. All right, let's get into this game. Denver Tech against Camu, and why do we show kickoffs, boys and girls? Because good things happen. Nick or just, Burns. Depending on who you're rooting for, bad things happen. Okay, the blocking on that was superb, yep. but he's got the wheels to make that play. Did he burn him? Nick Burn burning a trail through the turf right there. Love it. Love it. Early Look at the blocking though. Whoa! <laughs> Owens falls over on his face. I know he's 48. And then we got another block right there. Wow. Nick Burns, man. This guy might be something. Yep, true freshman. Let's see our Marshall update. Oh, Marshall. They beat Tulsa by six. They shouldn't they're, be. They're they're the top four football. They should not. No, it's not right. It's they're not better right. than Ardmore. What? <laughs> We're number one. Jamil Carter with a nice run here. Let's see if Jace Freeman can get these wheels turning. Jamil Carter with a nice catch there. And we got Sydney Layton, the fullback. The rumbler and tumbler, Sydney Layton. Third and five. Jace Freeman had a pretty bad game last week and now trying to pick it back up where he left off last season. And it just hasn't come to fruition. He's going to get sacked right there. And it's back to Denver Tech football here. Third and 10. Dallas Wright makes a nice play. And Camu gets the football back. We're about near the 40-yard line. Going to be up to the 50. But Diego Dobbs only going to get two. This Third is a tough six. Tech. This is tough Denver Tech defense. And it's I mean, always tough. They're, they're going to come at you flying hard. They're upset that they lost last week. They want to take it out. 
on Kansas A&M. But, you know, you got to respect Camus running ability. Yep. They can turn it on like a switch at any moment. You got to respect it. Second and two, going to pick up the first down to Diego Dobbs. I want to see more of him and Doug Flores, for sure. I need, I need those guys to be more involved. Oh, there you go. Yeah, like that. that. Like that. We need more of that. We need more power running. Diego Dobbs going to get that first down. And Rashid Lacey going to get that slant route for a touchdown. It's a tie ball game now, boys. And girls. Got to be inclusive here. 7-7. Seven to seven. Got Camu with a little surprise uh, in store for us, maybe. They beat Denver Tech last year, lest you forget. So... Watch out. Well, they got him at their place right now. What is that? The ball just slips out of Makovich's hand on a play action fake. I don't know, man. They do, know. They're doing a, a fake option, and the ball just flipped out of his hand. And <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't have a replay because we were just letting the CPU play. But, uh, you know, those are the kind of breaks that you see in real life. Like yeah. the team that the underdog team, those are the kind of breaks that they need. And but you got to come through right now. And they don't. That's not it. No. Nope. I mean, you turn that fumble recovery into three points. I, I guess it's all right. But you want the touchdown right there. You want to really stick it to him. But oh, Makovic's going to turn it over again. Oh, man. The interception down the sideline. And now I think he's starting to get into his own head right now. This could be bad for Denver Techies out there. Option for Freeman is stuff. So like I was talking about, I mean, the defense is going to be there. Chris Moore, love this dude out of Virginia, linebacker. I believe he's from oh. Virginia, but he was a big recruit for this team. Guy that they're really looking forward to utilizing this season. And he is pitching in in a big way here. Napoleon McQueen, 412. Okay. And up the middle, Napoleon McQueen for 12. That's not 12. a that's not a repeat 12. play right there. 12. Here's Scott Thomas for oh oh oh. 15. 18, 18 yards. 18 yards. Give him 18. I want to make a game out of this. Here's Makovich for six. Four yards. Four yards. We're doing this live right now. Yeah. Third and two. Third and two situation. And Thomas, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was going to say. Minus nine. Stays on his feet. Oh, no. Minus nine. Hey, it's only 10 to 10. So Camu is still hanging in there. They are staying alive. Staying alive. Staying alive. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. And 11. And. Well, we dropped the ball. Fumble. Picked up by Camu, though. But, I mean. This is tough for, for Camu, trying to hold up against these blitzes. Oh, God. I mean, this is just going to be a hard assignment all day. There's Nick Burns again with the speed, dude, pushing it past midfield. I can just see the way that he's reacting to the defense. He's going to be something special. He's a couple steps ahead. Yes, exactly. Exactly. He's anticipating. He's predicting. Third and 13. Makovich fired it deep. He's going to find his man out there. That's Alex Brewer for 28. First and goal. 47 seconds. Makovich to the corner. He's going to find Gerard Woodstrom for 10. That's brutal. Right before the half. Yeah. Only 45 seconds left. Camu, we see it on the board here, only 121 yards. So Denver Tech playing stingy. And then Layton gets stuffed. They're Denver not. Tech calls timeout. They feel like... They smell blood in the water. Can pick up some points. Oh, intercepted. Go, go, go. Turn turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Go. Uh, he took the wrong way. Yeah. They had three turnovers in the first half. And, and they're losing. And they're losing. Yeah. Wow. Not good. Not Let's, good. Well, they got one crack out of here. Let's see what they got. Freeman. Going about 13 yards to Lacey. So we have eight seconds now and a long field goal. Not gonna be, it's just way oh, off. Okay. Way off. Hey, we got one more play, folks. What? Why? One second on the automatic touchback. Going to Nick Burns, but he's down. So all that hullabaloo for nothing right there. There's one second on the clock. Yeah, I saw zero. Foot was on the wow. Foot was on the end zone. Wow, that's right hilarious. Out of the <laughs> Touchback. And they almost had a touchdown. Had Bakovich thrown it a little bit softer. Yeah. They had the touchdown. That's brutal. So Camu just kind of, I don't know. The secondary is going to be the weakness for this team. So that is definitely what Denver Tech's game plan has been in this one to air it out. Oh, there you go. Great run. There you go. Down Get in there. Me. That's brutal. One yard line. I hate this stupid thing, man. And Jace Freeman. You d 
gets. I hate Railroaded. the one. Yeah, if they don't get a touchdown here, Let's I'm see it. I'm Let's filing. see it. Oh, dude, they had a touchdown. That is in that's real life. Terrible. That's a touchdown. That's terrible. That's so bad. Camu with the three pointer right there and a big time catch by none other than Nick Burns. Nick Burns. Another Burns. diving catch. And there's Thomas falling forward for 16. That's brutal, man. This is a tie football game right now. <laughs> so stupid. So dumb. Oh, there it is. Owens lost his man, Anthony Parker. He's just kind of looking around and then he turns around and he's like, oh, oh, there he is. Tackle him. <laughs> and it's like, dude, he's got two feet. He's got possession. Uh, in the end zone, that's a touchdown already. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Did he have the football in the end zone? Yes, don't tackle him. It's done. It's done. Should be a flag. Dobbs can't get positive yards. Cam, we got to give the football back. And Denver mm. Tech is just slicing and dicing right now. That Camu weak secondary. And look at that perfect spiral. Well, look, I mean, if you want to just get down to brass tacks, I mean, the fact that they were losing at halftime with the three turnovers, that's all you need to know. Yep. If you can't cash in on that, you can't beat Denver Tech. If they're gonna, they get, they were gifting them that first half and they couldn't do anything with it. Jace Freeman going down here. It's just disaster. This hurts, but they have a capable backup quarterback that's Rashid Davis. And he completes this pass to Dobbs. So he's got a couple of completions already. Trying to get him into the end zone on third and goal. He had the guy in the end zone. Why would he throw short. five yards short of the end zone to Keenan Kirkland? Freeman comes on to, for the fourth and goal play. <laughs> going underneath, and it's a drop by Diego Dobbs. I think Bud Warner's day, uh, time here is done. Why would you put in Jace Freeman for a fourth down? Well, you, when you're ready to go, you're ready to go. No. They get, they get a three and out, one last crack at it, but he's throwing a pick to Tristan Prater. And now, yeah, I mean, the route, it's its its getting on. It's, it's over. Getting, it's, it's on. The game's over, yeah. guys. 31-13 in the fourth, 337. Now down under two minutes here and can't make tackles. It looks like they just gave up. I think Bud Warner's time here as head coach is is donezo. It's a tough season right now for Camu. That's going to be their fourth consecutive defeat. Not looking good. Kind of no surprise really here at all. Treeport, 38-24, beat them by 14 points. Hey, nice. customer Kurtz, Stephen Bryan had a touchdown run. Yeah, man. How about that? Good. It was a big run, too. Good run. Uba actually had 409 yards of offense. Report with 392. They had 300 rushing. They do it. They keep doing it over and over and over again. They, Ashley, good not simulation. They didn't even ask him to do anything. No, I love that. I love that about this team. <laughs> Jay Ballmer had 37 yards receiving, and that was pretty good for him. Buster Smith acquitted wow. himself well. Okay. It's much better than last week's game. It's better than what Lamont Christian probably would have done. Yeah, you might be correct about that. Louis Preston had a touchdown run, and then Mendoza had 116. So the Smith-Mendoza connection, there's something going on there. McCallan against Midland, 35-21 to final score. 14 unanswered in the fourth quarter for McCallan. Yeah, this was a close game, but as we see here, McCallan just kept running the ball. At Midland State, only 383 to 306. And again, with the efficiency and the completion percentage to touchdown ratio, man. Yeah. 12 so completion. Well, they, they gave, well I think they, great. this was a game with probably not very many possessions. Although Midland did try to run the ball more this yeah. week. You got Tyson 13 carries. I mean, Tyson was in the Heisman race. And then maybe the first four weeks of the year, he was putting up numbers. And then they went way heavy on the pass to try to use these receivers like Neely and Wynn yep. and Austin. It worked and, last uh, week. Yeah, but not this week. McAllen rises to the challenge. See Harkless with 180 and 3. Yeah, 12 completions and 3 touchdowns. Andres Buckley almost hits the century mark with 96. Blair only 54 rushing though. And we see receiving in Maddox, Brady, and McDaniel. All right, more ACU, 35-31, another close game for the Thunderwolves here at home against an opponent that's kind of had their number between Denver Tech and ACU. They're always tough, tough games, but yeah. we held strong, and that late, late drive 
by John Hicks and the Thunderwolves. That might be the Heisman moment for him. Yeah, I think the third down conversion rate was the story of this one. Oh, yeah. Armour could not get off the field. 300 yards plus two for John Hicks, 30 of 39. Four touchdowns. Xavier Wiggins with 47. We didn't really run the ball a whole lot. It was mostly through the air. We attacked their secondary. Yeah. Might have come out with a different little bit of a look. We did get the running backs involved through the air. Ten receptions for Wiggins being our leading receiver for three of John Hicks's four touchdowns. So yeah. the running game wasn't going. I know you hate this saying, but the running backs were an extension of the running game through the air in this yeah. game. Joe Russell played okay, but the two picks, the two picks really did him in. I think Penner only had six carries for 94. That was a good. It was, had a really good couple runs there for him. Yep, and he had 94 receiving. Jefferson with the touchdown. Jimmy Ireland at tight end with the touchdown, but just not enough for Aku. I think today. the biggest thing for us was was the defensive line. We talked about in the preview video. You know, if the linebackers in the defensive line kind of cover up that stench. That's the defensive it. backfield is causing us. Uh, we should have a good a good game defensively. Another close game. Back-to-back weeks for Ardmore and Nebraska State here. This game was pretty wild, although we tightened up in the second half, as, as we have done previously this year. We've had some, some good second-half defensive performances. We really held up, though, and it was like Odessa State, I don't know about – their play calling late they were doing the third down screens the field goal late I mean you could have argued maybe they needed to go for it and they never got the ball back so we ultimately wound out the rest of this clock and Odessa hung up 509 so you know Cameron Willis you got to tip your hat to him got to tip the hat 4 to 24 and 5 you know it was not his fault that they lost this game he played very well Doug Williams though top receiver at 146 we held Paris in check wow. Paris had nothing going in this game but it was all Parks and Williams but yeah Paris Austin he just wasn't really looking his way today for whatever reason well doesn't that go to show you though that even if you stop Paris Austin someone in this offense is gonna have a big day yeah so it just doesn't it really doesn't matter it's just the fact is is the opposing team gonna score more points you're not going to stop Odessa State's offense. It's just a matter of, are you going to score more than they do? <laughs> Shinovsky, all prep might be his best game of the year. Maybe, I don't know, the ACU game was good. He did screw up late, though. But he was very good in this game. Played very clean football. Had the 69 yards rushing on top of that. Hargrove with 90. And then, yeah, LaBelle was hurt early, and he's going to be out for the rest of the regular season. And we knew that was he was going to be an injury risk when we took him in. Yeah, but that's just the way it goes. Might be a big blow. Yeah, I like our running backs though. But Smith had 81 and a score. Joseph with the touchdown. Vivaldi had one catch for a score. Last game to talk about here: Denver Tech beats Camu 38 to 13. 25 point loss for Camu. <sighs> not good. We predicted they are in free fall mode at this point. It's not looking good. They need one win though. They need one win. To get into bowl eligibility, but at that's one and really four, that's the goal right now. It's just, yeah, just to end the bleeding and, and pick up one more W. This game, I mean, it, that kickoff return by Nick Burns set the tone. Yeah, because he just scored, and you're just like, you know, you're just like, whoa, this yeah. is not gonna, this doesn't look good. No, although they they fought back. Camu had the lead after one, but I mean, really, Denver Tech dominated late, pulled away. Makovich had himself a game, four thirty nine to three eleven. So Camu had 201 rushing, but this wasn't enough. And Denver turned the ball over twice. Freeman had to leave the game, and we'll have an update on his status, but Davis finished it. And Dobbs had 109. Jamil with 14. 13, so Jamil Carter nowhere near as productive as he was last week against Amarillo. A lot of people might be asking themselves after watching this, they're thinking like, okay, is the is the motivation there for Camu? Are they still you know, pushing yeah. as hard as they possibly can. And I assure you that it is. Bud Warner will not allow any slackers on his football team. So they're giving it everything they got. I, I think just they didn't have a good matchup here against Denver Tech. Yeah, Makovich had 251-3, tacked on 35-1, and one, so maybe he'll play himself. 
Back in the Heisman mix, Napoleon McQueen had 119. Nick Burns came back on the scene in a big way. Five catches for 104. But you see, these guys had all the touchdowns. Woodstrom, Reed, and Parker. That's going to be it for week number 10, guys. Let's take a look real quick. Just real quick preview of week 11. ACU in Shreveport. Odessa State Ew. at Denver Tech. This Any is a game. Possibility? I don't know. I, this is a game I highlighted a few weeks ago, thinking that maybe, maybe, just maybe, that offense for Odessa shows up against Tech and, and lays it to them. Camu against Nebraska State. You guys could move to eight and one Ooh. if a a win is nabbed here. Can say them though. Got to get a W to get bowl they're, eligible. They're desperate. So is Midland State. Yep. You know, both teams, they're not in the championship mix anymore, but they got to turn it around and, and finish strong. You have a, a good record at the end of the year. Ooh, ooh. This one ooh. is big. Ooh. This is the the rematch, not rematch, but the homecoming bowl for Brock Musselman. Yes. There's Playing a McCallan. lot of interesting, interesting storylines here in this one. Amarillo McCallum plus they're both from Texas. Well, they're both in the their division championship mix as well. Correct. So Amarillo is trying to stay alive to compete with Denver Tech. McAllen trying to stay alive to compete with Ardmore and ACU even. Even though they're ahead of ACU, ACU owns the tiebreaker over McAllen, so they need some help there. And then this one definitely not as intriguing as it was last year at Bryant no. Street. Honestly though, honestly though, Broken Arrow, they beat us last season with Bryant Street. He had a good game, really good game kind of cemented his Heisman. You never know what can happen in a rivalry. Oh, it'd be okay, yeah. No, we're gonna it's just we're gonna take Broken Arrow by, by the wood. Yeah, gonna... we're gonna broke we're gonna break this arrow into You stole and... my joke. What? About breaking things. I we're gonna break this arrow into like, I don't know, eight different pieces because we're gonna hand on their eighth loss on the season. Alright. It's gonna be awesome. You hate Broken Arrow. <laughs> no, it's a rivalry game. I, know, I don't understand. hate Broken yeah, Arrow. Just, it's just for fun. Their guys. season's almost over, mercifully. They have 9 out of 12 games. You called it, dude. I didn't think it was going to get this bad, but you called it. Preseason, you said it was going to get awful, and here we are. So, But no, guys, I don't hate Broken Arrow. It's just all in good fun. It's all in good fun. I, got, I have to act like I hate them, because then it's interesting. It's interesting. So, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed week number 10 action. Looking forward to week 11. Let us know in the comment section how your picks did. How are you doing in the picks, by the way? Week 11 picks are available for you guys to make, and the standings are updated down below. Heel Boy will have his picks returning for next Wednesday, so make sure you guys check those out if you're in need of last minute and professional advice, because he's always near the top of the leaderboard. Guys, leave a like if you like this thing, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that red button for subscribe or my logo in the bottom right-hand corner. We will see you guys next Wednesday for week 11 preview video. As always, peace.